okay so uh, this is a uh, video number three um, of my Ironman Arizona the final leg which is a transition from bike to the run to the shoot to the end um, I get off my bike give the bike to the handlers and if they take your bike white glove operation again amazing I get my bag my transition bag at this point in time all I got to do is take off my biking shorts um, maybe put a little bit more butt butter because now I'm gonna be running in wet shorts uh, anybody runs in wet clothes you know you're gonna get chafing eventually so I did that um, I had my tight track up and I had a nice new fresh set of dry socks and my running shoes I put my bib my number bib on I have my watch my foundation hat and time to go um, I really didn't even think about how my legs were going to feel normally after biking at least 70 or 80 miles and you go and do a run you feel that your legs become noodles um, you feel like noodles you can't really get them going um, which basically happened for me for the first quarter of the course Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention on the bike is that throughout my whole bike or just about from my first bike experience um, I was hardly able to see everything was fogged up and I figured that the fog was being caused by the rain I said what that doesn't make any sense what it was is that my contact lenses I have them on on my goggles from the swim but when I when I got into the bike, all the air that was going inside my helmet and all that, I, I think what happened is it dried them out. It dried them completely out and they got extremely foggy. So I was not getting oxygen to my eyes, um, which freaked me out because I could barely see. Now going into a dark run, I'm like, how the hell am I going to be able to see? All I could see when, it, when I saw the lights, because it's already turning dark, was huge halos around every light my eyes were very sensitive I said fuck this I threw away I took my contacts off I'm like I don't give a shit and I knew I didn't have a fresh pair of contacts which I didn't want to put contacts why would I want to put a new fresh pair of contacts well when I took them off I saw that I still had the halo so my eyes needed oxygen that's that was my figure that um, so at that point in time I decided not to start running without my contacts. I'm like, well, my vision is not that bad. Uh, it's not bad, uh, as a matter of fact. So I, I started I taking off. I started taking off. I started running. I stopped by the first aid and eight, tent, eight, tent, tent, tent aid. Fuck. And um, I asked the guy, do you guys have any eye drops? And he gave me some eye drops, which were pretty much useless. I started running, running into a couple people. Everybody's shivering because it's raining, it's cold. Everybody is shivering. I'm on my shorts and my triathlon top. Um, I'm okay. Maybe because I'm from Chicago and everybody's, you know, some people are passing by me and they're like, aren't you cold? I said, no. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, I'm from Chicago. Come on. I just swam in 53 degree water down so long ago. It's been kind of cold lately over there it's kind of cool shit not a big deal you know it didn't bother me besides again I had no options and I didn't care I really didn't care you know pain is temporary so I went with that I ran into some great people talking some people who were slower than me I was bad enough that I, I didn't want to I wish I would have hung out with them but I wouldn't I don't think I would have made the cutoff time and it's an individual sport I had to push them I had to put them on the side and I, I blew them away um, as the run started going, my legs started getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, I was not running a full, all uh, the full time. I was running perhaps three or four blocks, quarter of a mile, half to half a mile, and then I would walk a little bit, and then another quarter mile, and then I would walk a little bit, then another quarter mile, and I would walk a little bit, like and I would walk for like seconds, 10, 15 seconds, and then I would keep on. Um, I would run for three minutes or so, um, half mile and, and walk. So it was a walking thing, um, which was great, I, except for my socks were good, my shoes were great shoes. 
I felt strong. I kept eating, drinking. Oh, the soup that they gave you was awesome. They gave you, well, it was awesome because it felt good. Um, kind of like my hot dog story from the New York Marathon. That's another video. Um, until the point where you could barely see the course is dark and there's puddles all over the place from the rain. So I, I went to dodge one little puddle to end up with my foot in, inside another puddle. And all I could say at that point in time, there's a lot of people around me was, fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, I got pissed off because I wet my whole sock and everybody started laughing. I'm like, oh God, thank God, please don't let there be a course martial out here and get me in the deep shit, you know? But I think everybody pretty much took it well because everybody at that point in time, they knew what was going on. Um, so we started running the chorus, lonely out there, dark. I just kept pushing, 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 watching my time, trying to figure out time. I get to about mile nine and I see my son out there, my, my son and Maria. Um, and in my mind, I'm like, wow, they're driving back and forth from mile nine all the way to Iron Village, which is the main central area there. I'm like, wow, they're driving back and forth. Later to find out that they weren't driving. They were walking across a damn bridge back and forth. That, so they did their own little, probably half marathon, going back and forth in this wet rain. I mean, just thinking about that to me. When I thought about that, how they're going back and forth and they're out there and they're cheering. When I thought about how my co-workers put up a little bit party, a good luck party. When I thought about all my donors that gave, generously gave to this foundation, I can't quit. It's just that simple. When I think about the people that it's going to impact, I can't quit. There is no option. Um, that was my water boy so-called tackling fuel. Um, so I keep going back and forth, keep going, you know, and we did this. Went back to the second loop around, came back, um, saw my son, and my son gave me my, my time, my splits. He's like, Dad, if you keep this pace right now, you're going to make it. You know, just go, go, go. Don't you dare quit on me. Don't you dare go, go. And <laughs> again, my, my life is full of movie quotes, you know. Um, I thought about an officer and a gentleman when, what's his name? Um... The hamster and the butt dude, what's his name? Gear. Said, I got nowhere else to go. You know, well, okay. So, I got no place else to do. I, got, I had no choices. That's, that's the way that I thought. Everything was going good. I kept moving. Kept sucking it in. Kept looking for the turn, last turnaround. Came in. Mile 20. Bonk. All of a sudden... I get dizzy. I get extremely tired. Gee, I wonder why. I've been four hours of sleep, maybe, if you want to call it that. And I've already been out there 14 plus, 15 plus, 16 plus hours. No, 15 plus hours of nonstop pain, rain, cold, balls hurt, you know, side pain, arm shot, <laughs> you know, um, neck scraped. You're hungry. Some asshole out there a mile something was barbecue. And I feel like beating the shit out of him with his own barbecue. Um, don't do that. When you're out and you're do it and you watching Army, don't barbecue. Because your smell of your barbecue is going to kill, drive people nuts. All we're eating is rat food, basically. Um, at that point in time, I started bonking. I'm like, oh my God. I can't do it. I got to pull something. Luckily enough, I was near the... 20 mile 28 station I get there and the, the, the girl's like what can I do for you what can I get you I said give me everything you got everything I had bananas I had oranges goo shot goo gel I had bunk breakers I had two little cups of chicken broth Coca-Cola, which is, these are things that you're like, what? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the sugar in the Coke, the sodium in, in the broth, um, and then Red Bull. I've never in my life have had Red Bull, and I never really cared for that. Um, I gunned it down. 
I took everything that I possibly could and they gave me grapes. The grapes were wonderful. Um, and that's it. I, I said, and I started moving. I started walking as fast as I could. I felt dizzy. And then all, all of a sudden, and I started praying. I said, come on, God, you got to get me through this thing. Um, mind you that up to this point, well, even at this point, I have felt God's presence in everything. For some reason, I have always, throughout the whole race, I had this peace inside of me, next to me, just saying, keep going, keep going. I'm not going to give it to you, but I'm here. That was God. I, I, you know, his presence was, as a Christian, his presence is undeniable for me. Uh, it's just a great testimony. And um, I get to that bottle. I eat. I started, and I started praying. I said, come on, God, get me. All of a sudden, burst of energy. It seems like everything I've eaten, all my emotions started kicking ass. Going uphill, fuck this. I started running. I started running uphill because I know it's going up. It's got to come down and come downhill. I hear my name being called. This is at mile 20, 21 or something like that. And I knew that I was going to run into my son. And I see him down there, you know, and he's there again. And I said, I'll meet you at the finish line. I'm going to do this fucking thing. So I get there. I start booking it. I start booking, 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 running. Um, as I get a mile 26... Uh, one of my friends um, told me something very nice that I really appreciate that and she said before you get into the shoot to the final finish seeing um, to the final to the finish line if time is not in essence if you have time um, take a step back and Take a look at everything that's around you because this will only happen once. This will be your only first time and you do not want to be caught up on your time. You do not want to just run down the chute and then later on say, wow, I barely remember that chute. Let me tell you, I clearly remember everything about that chute because I, did, I took the time to step back and look around the corner and I saw about a block of just people cheering. I saw these extremely white lights just pointing it at you and emotions just fill your chest. As soon as I got into the shoot, I'm jogging and I'm clapping my hands because I'm like, you know, yeah, I fucking did it. I hear my name and I see Mike Riley, which is the voice of Iron Man. Anybody who's ever watched any Iron Man, he's the guy that says, you are an Iron Man. And he says, Julio Vilauta, you are an Iron Man. I give him a high five, which is priceless, and I cross that finish line just to see my son and Maria again at the final. They helped me get through this thing. The Lord was there, Maria and my son. They helped me, you know, get through it. My son wanted to cry. Um, I'm proud that he was there. I'm proud that I was able to do this. I'm trying to set a great example for him. I want my future grandkids to be able to say, man, grandpa's a fucking badass, you know? And um, I have this, this this thing I've earned. Um, the Iron Man, from there, obviously you take your photos and all of that kind of stuff and they give you food, which tastes like shit. They give you chicken, which I think it was somebody's ass. Um, boiled ass because it was nasty food. I don't know what the fuck. I, they should have gave me a little Cuban sandwich. That would have been sweet right there. Con cafecito. Joder. Um, but anyway, um, my whole journey to this point has been amazing. Ups and downs, doubts. But you got to realize that if you're into a training plan and you have a training program, if you stick to it, that whether it's an Ironman, the 5K, the 10K, the half mile, a marathon or so, um, if you have a training plan and you stick to it, don't cheat yourself out of it. Don't do it just to do it, but do it to learn something. Do it to, to push yourself. You're going to get through with it. The probability is tremendously high that you're going to get through with it. Those 20% things that you have no control of occur to me. It's the rain, the pains the thoughts, 
you know, um, the doubts, they were there. 20% physical, yeah. You know, I, I run every damn day at lunchtime. So that was great. Um, and then the 60% mental, I overcame that. Again, I overcame that because of my son, because of Maria. Um, so thank you basically to both of them. And thanks to everybody else who just, their, your thoughts. Believe me, I thought about every one of my donors, everybody. Just guys, push me. You gave me something to finish. I could not disappoint, and I didn't. Um, overall, my time, 16.05. Um, not 16.05, it was 16.35. The Ironman is a 17-hour event, and I finished it at 16.35, and I don't care. I finished it. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that for my first performance. I have a lot to learn. I have a lot to look at. I have a lot to think about. Um, where can I cut off? I think that by better, proper training, um, I can cut down a lot of time, which I would like to be right below a 15 hour iron. Man, I would like that. That would be good if I can do a 14 to 15 hour. You know, for an old geezer like me, that may not be that bad. Um, so anyway, thanks again for watching this this has been what 24 it's about an hour of videos I really appreciate you taking the time uh, feel free to contact me if if you want to get a beer and the Sun is out now what? Um, if you want to catch a beer and talk over this um, right now for the next year I do want to do the Chicago triathlon something that I haven't been doing um, I want to do that one uh, and I want to do another Ironman which should probably I, I wanted to do Chattanooga but it seems like with training and time and all the goals that I have it will be Louisville Kentucky so that'll be a good one too swimming into a river of turds probably the Ohio River um, so okay um, a long-term goal would be to maybe do one day do the skate from Alcatraz, which is a badass uh, triathlon. Uh, long-term goal will also be to go to Cebu, the Philippines, and be able to enjoy a little vacation over there, and then rock the uh, half Ironman there, which would be great. And long-term goal would be the to do the Barcelona Ironman, uh, which would be good. Um, also, maybe somewhere along the lines in there, throwing a Texas Ironman. Um, so this is my new thing now, um, Ironman, because it just the three sports just make things a lot more simpler. It's it's enough challenging what I like. I was really getting bored of marathoning. Um, it's a totally different experience with this thing, and I really enjoy that. But again, thank you very much for watching, and um, to the next time. Take care.